in the business world, we often talk about competition. But the problem with competition is that it tends to develop fear within us. We start to either <clears throat> get discouraged that somebody else is in our space doing the same kind of thing we are. Or we might even tend, some people tend to get aggressive towards their competitors. They might um, purposely talk bad about their competitors or uh, try to steal uh, the competitors, customers or whatever it may be. So instead of competition, why don't we start to use the term niche mate? Okay, that's, what, that's my recommendation. So competitor <clears throat> suggests aggression. Niche mate suggests collaboration. So the truth about it is that somebody who is doing the same thing that you are, think about this, somebody who is doing this, trying to provide the same service that you are to the same audience is by definition either your best partner or your best mirror. Okay, let me, let me explain. Um, if they are providing the same service, they're ser serving the same audience, chances are <clears throat> they're going to be approached by some potential clients they can't help for whatever reason. They might be too full or they might uh, not find that person to be a, the perfect fit for them or that person might find the service provider not to be the perfect fit. Anyway, your niche mate is going to have some people approach them that are not the right fit, which means – if you become friends with your niche mate, chances there's a better chance that your niche mate will refer business to you. Simplest way to partner and to co collaborate. Of course, there's as many ways to collaborate as there is creativity. So you might decide to create some content together. Uh, you might decide to share each other's best content. Whatever it may be, <clears throat> when you collaborate, everybody wins because you're your partner's audience, in any audience, right? In any audience, there are people who might follow that person's content but might not find that person's offerings to be, to be exactly right. But when that person introduces you and your content, the, the person who previously, previously didn't bought might look at your offerings and say, wow, this person is a much better fit for me. Energy-wise, style, personality, uh, timing, whatever it may be, okay? So <clears throat> in any audience, there are people who are not being served by offerings that if they only partner, they could serve those people, okay? Similarly, in your audience, you know, same thing. In your audience, I don't care if your audience is a million or if it's 10 people. <laughs> if your audience is only 10 people, two of them aren't going to buy your thing ever, let's say. Maybe it's five or eight. But let's say two of them will never buy your thing out of 10, because it's just the timing's not right or your personality is not right for them or whatever reason. But then if you introduce your partner, your niche mate, your so-called competitor, but I'm going to call it niche mate, to your audience, those two people might say, wow, that was the right person for me now. Thank you. So everybody wins, right? Your partner wins. The person who used who weren't served, now they can win. And you win by being the nice guy, the nice gal. Your whole audience says, wow. You are really abundance-minded. You're not, you're not afraid, okay? You're abundance-minded, and you're willing to introduce other people to us that may be a better fit for us. Amazing. You're amazing, okay? Everybody wins. Now, if for whatever reason you are not yet ready to partner with a niche mate or they're not yet ready to partner with you, still they can be your mirror. All right. <clears throat> if I'm trying to adjust how I look, right, am I – wearing the right thing how's my hair right it's very hard to figure out how my hair is doing unless i look in the mirror or unless i look in the camera right i have to look in the mirror to adjust how my hair is doing same thing with your marketing same thing with your business same thing with your offerings same thing with your content it's hard to critique your own marketing or your own offerings unless you look in a mirror and guess who the mirror is what the mirror is it's your niche mates your niche mates are your best mirror. If they are doing the same thing for the same audience that you are, or they're doing a similar thing for a similar audience, then by definition, they are a mirror. You can look at how they're doing things and say, I really like 
that they're doing it this way. I never thought of doing it that way myself, but now that I see them doing it, in other words, it's much easier to, get, to critique somebody else who's similar to you than it is to critique yourself, you see? Because it's hard, again, like I said, you can't see your own actions. You're too close to your own actions. You think you either, people either think everything they do is great or that everything they do is terrible. It's not, it's not quite right. But when you, when you look at a mirror, when you look at somebody else who's doing very, something very similar, it's easy to say, you know what, they actually, they, they're, they're, they're doing a good job there. Or uh, they're not, they, they could do that better. But you don't tell them. I mean, you could tell them that they're doing a good job. And if they're really, really open to it, you can tell them how to improve. But I'm talking about looking at them to provide insights into your own behavior. Does that make sense? So look at your niche mates either as partners, potential partners, if they are also abundance-minded and willing to uplift the whole, you know, uplift the whole instead of just thinking of themselves. If they're abundance minded, they're willing to partner, then wonderful. Find a creative way to partner. If they are not willing to partner or you're not ready to do that kind of thing, just look at them, study them as a mirror, okay, so that you can improve your own marketing, see what they're doing that you don't want to do, then okay, fine. I'm gonna make sure I don't do it. See what they're doing that you really like doing, then okay, well then do more of that because Remember the golden rule, do unto others as you want done unto you, right? Your niche mates are the perfect application of the golden rule. You look at how someone else is doing it and, and the, your, your own judgments of them are really your own judgments of how you can do it better. Your own praise of them is really how, how you can also do well in that area or maybe you are doing well in that area. So I hope this is helpful. And um, one thing I, want, I, I would in, that therefore encourage you to do, if you would like to, is to comment underneath this video and introduce yourself. Um, whom do you serve? What kind of client is your ideal client? What do you do for them? Okay. And how might, and, and if you want to, those, those two are the basic questions. If you want to take it one step further, you, you can say how you might like to partner. Um, but maybe it's too early for that. Just talk about who, who is your ideal client and what do you do for them? And now I know these things change over time. But just what do you know about your ideal client right now and what do you think you want to do for them? Okay, if you're just kind of in the early stages of figuring that out, we're always changing that. But just, just what, what you know right now. And, and if you see somebody else's comment who is a niche mate of yours, okay, or if you know a friend who is a niche mate for them, uh, maybe privately message that person. And say, hey, I really um, appreciate your introduction. I also do the same thing, or I also serve the same audience. Maybe there's a way for us to learn from each other, or mutually support each other, or creatively partner in some way. That's a win for everybody, you know. So I, you know, invite you to start practicing this idea of niche mates um, right here in the comments thread, if you if you wish to. I hope this is helpful. Let me know if, uh, if this makes sense. Uh, essentially, this is a reframing of competition into something much more beneficial and uplifting for everybody. And I think much more true of how the world works. Um, one more thing I forgot to say is that competition, the, the idea kind of um, dehumanizes that person, right? If you think of a competitor, you think of someone who's buff and like has a sword and like you're in the gladiator ring, like fighting to the death, right? But a niche mate has this idea that, well, they too have needs. They too have insecurities. They have, they also have their own geniuses like I do. And they have a family to support or they have themselves to support to the least. They too want to do good for the world. No, really your niche mates aren't trying to like destroy the world. They're trying to uplift the world, trying to do good for the world in the way that they know how. So they, just like you, okay, how do you think of yourself? You're worth supporting, right? You're, you're worth having opportunities. Well, so are, so do they. Same thing. If you just look at your, look at your own you know, thoughts of yourself, put yourself in their shoes. They think the same way. And so when someone comes along and is uh, open to supporting them and partnering with them, Think of someone coming along to you and, and being open, doing the same thing. It is an upliftment for everybody. So I hope this is helpful. Um, and anyway, let me know if you have any questions. And I look forward to your, to your comments uh, uh, if you have any. Take care.